On this episode of Design Cut Build, we invited Juan Ibarra, previously seen on the TV show Gold Rush, over to the studio. He's got a Torchmate 4800 that he wants to put in a trailer, so we're gonna have to build him a water tank. We don't think a 4000 series table has ever been put in a trailer before, and we can't wait to get started. So let's get ready to design, cut, and build. Hello and welcome to another episode of Design Cut Build and boy do we have a special project for you this week. It's going to be part one of a two-part project that we filmed a few months back, even before our garage was finished. We invited Juan Ibarra, previously seen on the TV show Gold Rush, to stop by and discuss a very interesting idea. He wants to put his Torchmate 4800 on a trailer and make it mobile. Previously what I've done on job sites is have to cut stuff out by hand and uh, that's pretty time consuming so what we're deciding to do here is we want to get a table set up in a trailer, that way we can get up to the job, be able to cut our brackets, cut our pieces, get out of there. Since it's a water table, it needs an external water tank to keep that water safe while on the go. We settled on a rectangular design that makes use of the drain in the back left corner of the 4800. There will be three valves in the design, a drain valve, a pressure valve, and a release valve. And since the tank will be pressurized, we'll need to add some baffles in the tank for support, Make sure our welds are airtight. Well, folks, that looks like uh, that's going to be our project here for this design cut build. I couldn't have said it better myself. Let's get started. All right, the team put together a great design for Juan, and now it's time to build it. The first step on the list, cut out the top and bottom of the tank out of 14 gauge mild steel. So what we're doing here, we have to use this giant brake to bend the lower half of the water tank. Yep. Four corners, four bends. Bend number four. I see we have some challenges with working with a piece this big. Yeah, so some we, gapage. We, we had a little bend mishap with the, <laughs> with the brake. It uh, didn't bend all the way. Then in order to re-bend it, we would have had to take all the tooling apart and then slide it back in once the piece is back in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a, a simple cheater stick and then we'll just wrench everything over in order to get it uh, as close as possible at this point. Okay, to cut some pieces for our breaker bar, we looked through our shape library and we're gonna cut two squares out of 3 16 material, roughly three inches wide. Uh, we're also gonna cut a rectangle out of eighth inch material to act as a spacer for the squares to put over the wall. To assemble our new tool, we're going to clamp these pieces together and then we can weld across the top, the corners, keep this nice and stiff. Then we'll take our bar, put it right on top, weld this guy on, and you've got a little leverage to get that uh, bent over. Any excuse to make your own tools, basically. Okay, you want to protect that ink, you know. It's UV sensitive. I don't claim to be a welder, I claim to be a hobbyist, so. Uh, whether it was my welding skills or the design of the breaker bar, the front flap busted loose on us, so to fix that, we welded on another piece that added a little extra support. In no time, the side was properly bent, and it was time to move on to welding the edges. First, tacking the corners, then filling the gaps. But it sounds like an old dirt bike in a distant field. It does you know that's the perfect setting. Those should be watertight for sure. If you have a big plate on here like this, we don't have to make sure it's 100% square because we could do a, a line corner, a line edge for our plate alignment. 
right there, the line edge, now that all of our part is now going to be skewed to that same angle. Oh. Why didn't we just straighten the metal? Well, what if it's a big three-eighths three piece of metal? That's a back-breaking, that's a labor right there. Gotcha. Boy, these things are smart. They're only as smart as the user. <laughs> And then it's time to pick up the pieces and go fishing for more, apparently. Yeah, you never know what you're gonna find in there. I'm gonna try to spell sham wow. Oh, did we run over something? Huh? Oh, wait, no. Oh. Man, no, we didn't take any of the pieces off, dude. Okay, that's a no-no. Keep things off of your rails. <laughs> Yeah, that was a lesson learned the hard way for me there. But thankfully, the table is built to last, and we were able to cut the second nested batch of parts, this time without a hitch. That was so newbie of me. Happens to the best of us. I've, I've done it. I left a wrench there once. <laughs> <laughs> dig, 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 that's what we're meant to Sounds do. Sounds like a uh, triangle. Uh, kind a of. Cowbell almost. Sound, cowbell. Sounds like a rectangle. <laughs> it's called malnourishment. When you realize you were the new guys, they were telling you how to do it the hard way. <laughs> Your car's gonna smell like fish tomorrow. <laughs> But sitting in the class over the last two days, I, I get it. I can go back and I can teach it to my students and I myself understand what I'm doing to make me an effective educator. Uh, things were starting to get a little loopy around here, so we decided to call it a day. Thankfully, Juan decided to join us for day two. Maybe a little work will get done. So since we're building a portable tank to go underneath the plasma table, we're actually gonna build baffles in it. So it'll be a support for the top of the pan, and then also uh, it'll keep the fluid from sloshing around in the tank. Okay, looks like I need something to do again. Iggy. We're gonna sand these corners down. Right. Make them look nice and smooth. The biggest thing is the bottom piece. Okay. So that way it's not sitting all yeah, weird yeah. oblong. It's gonna be flat. Uh, but also, you'll notice that when we broke this, this edge is actually a little bit lower. Yeah. So yeah. what we're yeah, we're gonna have to feather this down. Looks like Juan is done welding the baffles. Now comes the hard part. I went 15 and, and a half. And a half. Yeah. Center, yeah. Okay, what's 112 divided by four? Yep. You came up with 28, you did? Yeah, why is that wrong? It's three, it's not four. Didn't even realize it until now. I think we'll be fine. That's a, yeah, that's still 10 hold downs. Yeah, still quite that a should bit. be good. And we're doing half inch holes in here, so yeah. I think we'll be good. We should probably do the math from now on, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Math has been and will always be Iggy's domain, even after this little miscalculation. But they get right back at it, start welding the fasteners on the side and the baffles in the middle. It takes a while, so they manage to keep themselves entertained. Dude, Iggy's catching up. Trying. So how long have you been welding one? Uh, three and a half days. Really? <laughs> <laughs> no. Darn, I didn't catch you. You were close, dude. You were close. I saw how close you were getting. <laughs> I better pick up the speed a little bit. <laughs> it's always a race, right? Yeah. As long as it gets done right. That's it. So with the baffles installed, it's time to put on the top. But wait. I think that's all we're going to do for this week. Hey, it's OK. I know it's a cliffhanger. But there's just so much involved in this project, we're going to have to break it into two parts. 
twice as much fun though. We'll be back in two weeks and we hope you'll be back too. So for now, we designed it, we cut most of it, we're halfway through building it, and we'll see you next time. To learn more about Lincoln Electric's line of plasma cutting tables, please visit torchmate.com.